In this video, I'm gonna give you five simple Claude prompting tips that you can find in the description of this video, and I'm gonna explain how I use them. Let's just get straight into it without any dilly-dallying, any, you know, introductions, things like that. So the first one here is this prompt here, which just very simply says, give me full production-ready code with no placeholders. Do not significantly change my code as it is now, but simply add what I've asked you to add. So let's just go through this prompt very, very quickly. So let's just grab an example here. So we'll go to new window. Let's we'll go to journey and we'll go to high.py. So this is a script that I made specifically for a client. It's just like a little auto blogging script, basically. It's, it's pretty basic, but let's say that I do this prompt without the prompt that I'm giving you in today's video. So I just say, please make this script use OpenAI instead of Anthropic. And we'll give it the script. And then I'm gonna just gonna do OpenAI quick start guide. The reason that I'm doing this is because uh, Anthropic is behind on how ChatGPT actually works. So it will not do this properly. So what you wanna do while you're on here is just scroll down and uh, this is Python, sorry, not Node.js. So we'll go on Python and we'll just give it this. And then I'll say, here's the documentation for OpenAI. Now I'm hoping what this is gonna do is it's gonna use placeholders and it's gonna make it very, very difficult to copy and paste the code. So let's have a look. Okay, obviously, because I'm making a video, it doesn't do that whatsoever. What it normally does is it will put a lot of placeholders in this code, especially when you get to the point where you have 300, 400 lines of code. The issue with that is that if I say something like uh, now uh, make it use Anthropic, I'm just trying to get it to do a very specific thing. Let's hope that it will actually do it this time. Okay, because the code is so short, it's not actually going to do it. But what it normally does is it writes slash slash, which is a comment, and then it'll say something like, it'll just do this in the middle of prompt, for example. In fact, this is a good example because it's removed the prompt, right? I didn't say remove the prompt. I didn't say give me a different style of prompt. I didn't say any of that. But Claude, in order to save tokens and to save anthropic money, is kind of pre-built to not give um, useless or you know, useless tokens, to not waste useless tokens. So now let's do the same prompt, okay? So we'll give it the script. This is the original one. And we'll say this. Um, and then we'll say, here's the documentation for open AI, change anthropic for open AI. And then we'll give it a quick start. And then what this should do is it should not change my prompt and it should be copy and pasteable. Now, obviously, because I'm making a video, it's not gonna do that, but we'll see. So this is really, really useful for coding specifically because a lot of the time, what it does is it either just changes your prompts, which first of all is an absolute nightmare if you've been working on those prompts for months. But then another thing it will do is it will say like, it will just literally just delete all of this and it will just say content, oh, that's not even how you bloody comment on Python, is it? Content generation, same as before. And then I'll just say dot, dot, dot. The issue with that is that you're trying to copy and paste, okay? You don't wanna, you're not a coder. I'm not a coder, for example. I don't wanna have to think about where to put things and how to blah, blah, blah. And it gets very, very frustrating very, very quickly. This one prompt has saved me so much hassle, okay? Now let's just see if this has worked, although it working is not really the most important thing here. Uh, we'll do Python high.py. And then it should say, uh, okay, so we'll do pip install OpenAI. This should be very quick. Okay, it doesn't even matter if it works or not. This video is not about how to code this necessarily. So let's just forget about whether it works or not. The important thing is that it's given me all of my code without me having to chop and change and you know paste this here and paste that there and blah, blah, blah. It gets very frustrating very, very quickly, okay? So this one tiny little prompt has actually saved me a huge amount of time. Let's get into the second prompt, which is responding in JSON. So what this prompt does is, and there's an even better way to do this with ChatGPT, by the way, if you're curious, there's a way to make this work 100% of the time. So you can do open AI JSON mode. 
And this is super, super useful um, in the API. The, the reason it is, is because you can take a large volume of information and break it up into JSON, and then you can feed that JSON to another prompt, okay? The reason this is so useful is because if you just say, write me a summary of this page, right? You, you're scraping, let's say, using LLMs. It will just write you a general summary. But instead, if you say, give me a JSON response with price, description, images, you know, um, key information, product information, all of these different things, returns, you can then much more easily manipulate data using a JSON request. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give this an example. So um, we'll just use two men. So I'll just show you exactly what I mean here. Let's go to paste to mark that. If I just say, right, write me a summary of this page and then just give it the page. All it's going to do is it's just going to give you a very, very general, you know, there's not really any information in this that you can use necessarily for, you know, an article or whatever it might be. But if instead what I say is respond in a JSON, um, let's say object without discussion, do not speak back to me. The first character response should always be that sign. The reason I do it like that is because um, my, the rest of my API response is expecting a JSON response here. So if it says, um, here is your JSON response, it will break, which is actually why OpenAI with their JSON mode is, is doing a better job than Claude or Anthropic in this case, because they have a way that will always return JSON, which is really, really useful. So we'll say, we can put our own things here, whatever the hell you want, it doesn't matter. So price, uh, product, title, product, image, and let's say product, um, business information, okay? And then we'll hit enter here. And you can see what it did there. It instantly went to giving me this as the first character of the response. And then you can see it's given me everything else that I asked for. Okay, so the price, the shirt uh, title, the image. So if I open this, this should be a real image. Yep. And it should be a multi-color uh, cotton shirt, which it is. And it's also got the name, product information, or business information, etc., etc., et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to say now give 10 products. And you can see it's doing exactly the same thing. And this is a really, really good prompt to use within your AI systems or within just the front end of ChatGPT or with Claude, because this allows you to put a big amount of information and give it to an LLM to sort out. Let's go to the third prompt, which is very simple again. Please digest this information and then tell me you understand. Do not do anything else yet. This is an extremely good way to write high quality articles using Claude. I'm gonna show you exactly why. So I'm gonna go on Perplexity, just because I do actually like Perplexity, especially Perplexity Pro. I do think Perplexity Pro is extremely good. I just don't think their API is that good, to be honest with you. They have an almost agentic workflow on the front end. So let's just say that we're writing about Kiton. So give me a detailed analysis of the company Kiton. So what this will do is it will find a huge amount of information, okay, and then I'm going to feed this uh, prompt to it one by one, and I'll explain the process in a bit more detail. So you can see we have core values and philosophy, which, you know, this is not something that you're going to get from your bog standard, write me an article about Kiton, and then just sending it to um, ChatGPT or whatever. This is a much, much better detailed, interesting, data-filled uh, you know, piece of information. So what you can do is you can say, please digest this information and tell me you understand. Do not do anything else yet. So I'm gonna hit enter. And what it should do is it should just say, I, I have read and understood. Please let me know what you'd like to do next. Then what you can do is you can feed it the next part of what you want it to use. So let's say I wanted to use these collections and I'll just use um, same app to clipboard and I'll just press start here. Also, store these collections, don't do anything else yet. And it should say these have been stored, blah, blah, blah. Then we go to twomen.ip slash collections slash kitom. 
and we just grab some products like this and we're going to paste the mark down and we'll paste this control a control c and we'll say now store these product image links product links prices etc and then once you get to this point here you can actually just give it you know a writing prompt so i just got one here uh, write a fully SEO optimized article, don't use superfluous language, use basic language, output in Markdown, write an article about Kiton for two men, and then press enter here. And now it should have all of the really good, yeah, exactly. So you can see how you can create much more information rich articles with very, very little effort doing something like this. Now, obviously, this is just a very quick example. I wouldn't necessarily post this as is, but this is how you can feed a lot of information step by step and get a much higher quality output at the end of things. So the fourth prompt is really good, again, for coding. A lot of these are for coding, but I just really want to share my experiences with AI coding. What One of the biggest problems with Claude and with ChatGPT and with LLMs in general is they have this thing where they will always give you an answer. Okay, so if you say to it, I want to make a change to my code, even if you use the first prompt, give me full production ready code with no placeholders, et cetera, et cetera. Even if you use that prompt, sometimes what it will do is it will misinterpret what you're saying and it will completely change your code and you won't realize until a month later when you're, you know, trying to go live with this code and suddenly it's completely different. So you have to be extremely careful when you're using AI to change large pieces of code. And one of the best ways I've found personally to ensure that it's doing what you want it to do is this prompt right here, which is first break down step by step how you would implement this and ask for my feedback. And I want to say, um, make me a snake game. So it shouldn't just go straight into this. It should first, yeah, perfect. So this step by step thing means that it's reasoning, it's thinking before you tell it to do something. Normally what it does is it just gets on with it, right? So now if I say make me the make me a Python snake game. And it's even asking, would you like more visual elements? Would you like different mechanics, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But what it should do is it should make a slightly more complicated version than if I had just said make me a snake game from scratch, okay? And this is one example, but it's actually much better for doing things like changing very, very large, very, very complicated pieces of code. So let's just try this pip install pygame. And then, sorry, satisfied, okay, python pi.py. And then we have our little version of snake. And yeah, that's pretty much it. For number four, it's particularly good for editing large code bases. Now, the final thing I want to talk about, this is less of a prompt and more of a prompt tip, is XML tags, okay? Now, the really cool thing about XML tags is that, especially in the API and also to a, to a lesser extent in the front end, and also, again, on the console, on um, here, so if I go to console and I press start prompting, it's also really useful for this here as well, but it's not really that useful for the front end just because if it's a large paste, then it normally goes into the add content section here. But basically what this means is you can have multiple inputs and the XML tags make it extremely obvious to Claude what that input is. So for example, let's say that we have a keyword input in my prompt and we have uh, data from website in my prompt and we have um, uh, something like, yeah, perplexity data, right? So we have three different pieces of information. All you have to do to get Claude or ChatGPT to fully understand what it's doing is wrap it in uh, tags. And it will normally look something like this. Okay, this is, the, this is a variable, okay? And then you close the XML tag, then you do the same here. So data from website, and then you do, wait, and you do uh, script data here. And then finally, we do perplexity data and some info 
animation from perplexity. And then we do a closing XML tag. This is purely for prompting. This has nothing to do with code, really. Okay. And then within your prompt, you can say, I am writing an article about, and then instead of writing keyword, you write, for example, an XML tag like keyword. And then you say something like, uh, you must use the information from data from website, and you must use perplexity data um, as a primary source for your information. What this does is instead of just sticking all of your prompts and all of your data together, you're splitting it up so Claude can fully understand you want it to use this data for this part of the prompt, you want it to use this data for this part of the prompt, et cetera, et cetera. That's pretty much it, guys. These are five of the best prompting methods that I've learned in the last couple of years. These are really, really helpful, especially for AI coding, but also for other things. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you're watching all the way to the end, you're an absolute legend, and I'll see you soon with some more content. Peace out. If you're serious about business growth, you should need to watch this video to understand the realistic expectation of what it takes to create a successful website using organic SEO.